because I just can't get enough of this new Beltrus Twix style. I purchased it in two more colors. Plus, we're gonna do If you remember my original full-length review of this style with all of the details, um, it was in the color Butterbeer Blonde sitting back here on the letter P. I have it now in two additional colors. What I'm wearing here is the Tres Leches Blonde and I also have it in the Brown Sugar Sweet Cream, my favorite brunette in the Belle Tress line. So your Tres Leches Blonde is going to be a creamy, soft blend of three different blondes. You're probably gonna see something a little more neutral, maybe a touch of warmth, and then also some cool blonde mixed in there. Now, all of it mixed up together gives me a very soft, beigey type effect, very, very neutral. And all of that is on a light brown root. And that rooting is done so well on this color. It's more ashen tone. Definitely blends in better than a darker root would just lending itself to that really soft look. And you'll see they do bring the highlight right up to the root. This is the Beltress Twix, which features a temple to temple extended lace front and left monofilament side part. This is one of the newer lace designs that are coming out by Beltress, as opposed to the older ones. They stopped at the temple and it was a very short monofilament. This has definitely improved in my opinion. And this color on this style is really nice because it's not too bold and dramatic. This curl and this volume and length is already dramatic. So this softed color addition here, I really, really like it. So this style just really jumps out at me as being more of a retro inspired style, maybe from the 80s um, where you got the spiral perms. This one kind of looks crimped in certain areas too. The crimping irons were very popular back then. So if you do like that crimped look, rather than hauling out your crimper and crimping a heat friendly style, you could just purchase this Twix. I think it would give you that same beautiful crimped effect. So this really reminds me of some natural curl as well. Ladies that had some really beautiful, natural kind of frizzy curl and they let their hair grow. Um, who am I thinking of here? Like Bernadette Peters is one and there's probably many, many others. So in the natural state, it's thick, it's wiry, it's curly and it takes a lot of effort to get it to look really beautiful like this. As little time as it takes for you to put this on, you have instant, instant, beautiful curl. So this is the Tres Leches Blonde on the brand new Twix. I'm so excited to have this. And next to this Butterbeer Blonde, you're gonna see Butterbeer Blonde is a sandy, a dark sandy blonde with a lot of platinum highlight. So next to the Tres Leches, it's gonna have a little more dimension, more depth of color. Uh, two reasons for that. The Sandy Blonde is a little deeper than the tones in the Tres Leches, plus the rooting is a medium brown compared to a light brown. So you can definitely see the difference in the root color. And the contrast between the Sandy Blonde and the Platinum give this a little more drama compared to the softer, creamier blend of the Tres Leches. I really do love them both. So here we are, Brown Sugar Sweet Cream. I can experience this style in my life in a beautiful brunette tone. Absolutely gorgeous. This one has a lot more drama and dimension compared to the Tres Leches Blonde that I just had on. So what you'll find with the Brown Sugar Sweet Cream that it's a combination of some dark, some medium, some light browns, and a couple of different blondes. One more of a golden blonde and the other being more neutral or cool. So you're gonna see a beautiful blending. I've seen some variation in this color. Um, some lean more warm than others. This one seems to be pretty neutral but those highlights will really stand out against this deeper brunette base color. And again, they bring that highlight right up to the root. It's not a stark 
banding effect there. It's just a nice natural look that really softens that lace front. The lace front, again, running temple to temple. You shouldn't be able to see any visible seams there. And then the left monofilament part going back to the hind crown. One thing with styling, it is so versatile to style this one. So even though I love this and all of its free and natural glory, when I first got it, it was a bit overwhelming just visually to me. It doesn't feel heavy. Um, you can definitely tell there's a lot of hair here. But one of the things that I learned to do pretty quickly was to uh, reduce this voluminous look by adding some clip backs. This is such a versatile style. And that's one reason why I love this too, is because it's already messy. It already gives us a message that this is not a perfect style, right? I love that because it's so forgiving. A little messy updo just makes it even more sweet and even more sexy. And you can sort of customize the overall profile of this wig through styling with lots of clips. Now, one thing I do want you to remember on this when you're styling is that ponytails will be spectacular, um, but you're going to have to use a large sized claw clip or a large pressure clip because there's a lot of hair. When we draw that ponytail back, I mean, it's every bit of two inches in diameter back there. So you're going to need more of a large clip if you want to bring all of the hair back at one time. The other thing that you could do would be to use a, more of a scrunchie. So with scrunchies, they kind of adapt to the volume and width of your ponytail or your updo. I like working with scrunchies. You can create a low bun, which I think is super cute on this one. See what a nice pulled back low profile you can get on the sides here? That's what that extended lace front is giving you. But usually I prefer to just sort of pull out a couple of tendrils carefully here and wear them down over the front of the ear. So let's, let's try that ponytail. Love it. Isn't that cute? And you still got that nice smooth pull back look. You could add several. You could lose, you could leave it in more of a looser ponytail by pulling a little bit up and away. Really cute. There's just endless things that you could do here. Someone suggested uh, that I braid this and see what kind of looks I can get from a braid. Well, I have to tell you, I am not an expert in braiding. I would rather twist and do very simple, messy type updos than do anything formal or tight like a braid. Um, but you can definitely braid this. I think I might like to go with that twist look. Just take some fiber here and twist, twist, twist all the way back to just under the crown. Give it a clip. Again, that twist could also be a braid. 
I think that would look really good. Be inspired to work with this. I love it now that I have a mirror that I can look at. Just absolutely adorable, isn't it? This is something so new and so different by Beltress. I am so excited that they are bringing us uh, the diversity of curl that I, at least I crave, and I know that other curly wig lovers crave as well. It's the hair we always wanted without any fussing or curling irons or anything. It's just ready to go right out of the box. Now, if you really like this texture, this curl, but you're not crazy about the length, if it's just a little bit too long for you, I know they have a style coming out. It's called Amber Rock, Amber Rock. And I'm not quite sure when it will be released. If I can find that, I'll put the information here. At this point, I think it's just an estimate, but I'm really hoping they come out with it pretty soon because it's just like this, but shorter. Um, based on the pictures, at least, it looks a lot like this. So it's probably going to be a good four or five inches shorter. And I can't wait for that style to come out. I think it will be absolutely fantastic. Okay, are you ready to do a side-by-side -side comparison of all three of my beloved Twix styles by Beltrass? Thanks, everybody, for joining me today. We'll see you soon on Tazza's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One.